Med school so far has been an amazing emotional roller coaster that hasn't quite finished yet, but I'm most of the way through. There's a stereotype that med students don't have any time to do their hobbies or socialize, and instead they spend all day in their rooms studying. But what I've actually found out is, of course it's important to study hard, but there's also plenty of time to work on whatever else you wanna work on. That being said, only if you know how to study effectively. I've made my fair share of mistakes, especially earlier on during my first and second years of medical school. And I want to share these with you so that you you can skip out on these mistakes. If you're new here, I'm Anthony and I'm about to be a final year medical student in about a month's time. I'm very excited. Last year I managed to achieve top 1% in my exams without sacrificing my hobbies, my social life and starting this YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's get into it. First mistake I made was going into way too much detail. Before you even join medical school, you get told that okay, this is different to A-levels now. This is different to high school. You need to really buck up now and you need to study hard. Otherwise, you're going to get left behind. A-levels were a breeze. Now university, it's big boy education. You have to take things seriously. I think with that mindset drummed into everyone's head, everyone thinks they must learn everything. There's naturally this sense of competition when you first join medical school. No one talks about, but you can feel it. All that does is just make you have this mindset of, I need to know everything, 100% detail. I can't have any gaps in my knowledge, any blanks. But there's one thing that you have to understand is that medicine is endless. There is literally unlimited things in medicine. And so things that medical students learned 10 years ago are very different to what we're being taught now. If you wanna stay healthy mentally, physically, enjoy university as well as trying to achieve top grades, then you have to recognize that medicine is endless. So avoid going into too much detail. Two things I would bear in mind. Firstly, kiss, all right? Kiss. Keep it stupidly simple. Try and flesh things out. Whenever there's a lecture, whenever there's information you find very complicated, separate them into understandable chunks of information that you can digest much easier. And keeping it stupidly simple applies to your studying techniques, your revision technique. When you find something that works from you, for example, be it Anki flashcards, then stick with it. If doing mind maps works for you, then stick with that. The next important thing is to use the 80-20 rule. So to understand that 20% of the inputs will generate 80% of the outputs, i.e. learning what's high yield, learning what information is likely to be tested upon in the exam. Asking people in years above, really, really hone in on the high yield concepts so you can put your studying time to the most efficient, productive use. You're gonna set yourself up to not only do well in exams, but also to excel in developing yourself personally throughout the rest of university. The second mistake that I made was that I relied too heavily on textbooks. Again, I already had everything mapped out in my mind about the correct way to study, and it closed my mind off to explore what really worked for me. There are specific gold standard textbooks for everything in medicine, from anatomy to pharmacology, for example, Gray's Anatomy, for example, Rang and Dale's Pharmacology, you know, these, these famous books that have been around for ages. So you think that, oh, okay, cool. If I just do this, I'm gonna do well. But textbooks are a lot. They go into a lot, a lot of detail. Textbooks are kind of a recipe for going down these deep, deep rabbit holes where you try and learn everything there is to know about everything. It becomes kind of all consuming. If you instead have a goal in mind about what you want to study, what you want to learn, then you can specifically go and find it on the internet. Make the most of this incredible invention that we have, the, the internet. Resources like Zero to Finals, Osmosis. Some people like me I'm very much visual learners and I can really understand things when there's diagrams accompanying speech and text. So I just found that using the internet was just way more easy and way more fun for me to study. Making it fun really matters. If it's fun, it will be sustainable because with medicine, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's about putting in work little and often instead of cramming for your exam. The third mistake that I made was wasting time on clinical placements. It's a dramatic change away from the previous two years, largely lecture focused, not much real life clinical experience. And then from year three, you're kind of thrust into the deep end. And there's, there's no real way for them to prepare you for it, apart from starting and just diving straight in. But there are things that you can do to make sure that you make the most of placement and you learn the most that you can. When I first started, 
started, I was I was a bit nervous. I was a bit shy. I I didn't really feel like I belonged there. You just kind of feel like you're in the way. You think, do they actually want me there? Do they actually care that I'm there? That is a common experience. That's a common experience, but it's not something that you have to experience. Firstly, you need to have a plan. Before you go into placement, you should know where you're going to be what you want to learn, what you want to get out of placement. There's no point in just passively rocking up to placement, expecting to be spoon-fed information. For example, say you're on the hepatology team. So you're going to revise what conditions affect the liver, what things cause it, management. If you come prepared, then you can ask questions. And asking questions shows what kind of student you are. It shows that you're interested. The doctor will respond positively to that. They'll see that you're trying to get stuck in. They're seeing that you're making an effort. And so they're going to want to take you under their wing. If you don't show enthusiasm, why should they be enthusiastic? You almost have to treat the doctors and consultants just as normal people. Sometimes you come into a hospital and you just see them as this kind of godlike figure. You kind of have this imposter syndrome that you're not supposed to be there. Obviously, obviously you need to treat them with respect. You treat your you should always treat your elders and seniors with respect, but you should also treat them like humans because they are you should really believe you're part of the team because you are. You you deserve to be there. You've studied hard, you've passed your exams, and now you've made it onto clinical placement. So you should really make yourself feel at home and part of the furniture of the hospital. A big part of clinical placement is about putting things into context, putting what you've learned and tying it into real patients. That's when things start to really click and stick in your brain. You might forget a condition, but you're not gonna forget the patient that you spent half an hour talking to who had that condition. That leads me perfectly into the sponsorship for today's video. I'm so excited to introduce to you Scope, a completely free resource. It's a student EMR with an encyclopedia of medical knowledge embedded within. Think of it like the digital version of notes that doctors make for each patient, plus Wikipedia inside it to help you learn anything you don't understand. It's a comprehensive medical knowledge platform. It teaches you how to reason through a bunch of common clinical scenarios using a bank of case studies written by real doctors and physicians. I really believe that all effective teaching at medical school starts with patients and problems. And this is done through real life case studies. If there's anything you don't understand, any symptoms, all you need to do is hover over the information icon and it will show you YouTube links and other text resources to help you fill your knowledge gaps there and then instead of having to go elsewhere and try and work things out. Everything is streamlined so you can learn within this one platform. And there are also videos showing step by step how to use the system to make it easy for you. You can find the case studies, do them yourself, explore the system. It's completely free to sign up. Go to the link in the description below and sign up for an account. All right, back to the mistakes I made. The fourth mistake that I made was that I convinced myself I could only study well alone. And I don't know why when I came to medical school again, I just thought everyone was gonna be super competitive. I thought everyone's gonna be distracted. No one's gonna wanna help each other. So probably best to study alone because no one's really gonna help you. But that was, completely the wrong way to look at it. In medical school, there are obviously gonna be people who are not gonna share their notes, they're not gonna help you, but there are people who, who will. And the people who will understand that we're in this together. The people who will genuinely understand that there's no advantage to keeping things secret. We're all on this journey together. Why not make this process a lot more fun and enjoyable by working and studying together? When you study alone, sure, sometimes you might get a bit more work done. You might be a bit more efficient, but in the long run, it's a lot less enjoyable and it's not very sustainable. If you're stuck on something and you ask your friend, they might know the answer straight away and it saves you from having to go down a rabbit hole of videos, asking your professor, asking your doctor. Instead, your friend can just tell you there and then. You can help plug each other's knowledge gaps. You can share your reasoning. That is the bit that takes a long time to develop on your own. So really and truly, you're really helping each other out. And on your own, it's very, very likely that if you study for a long, long, long time, you're gonna burn out. Everyone's on the same journey. Everyone wants to be the best doctors they can be. And so studying together is just such an uplifting way to strive towards that goal. Lastly, but not least, mistake number five I made was drowning myself in a never-ending pile of flashcards. 
One of the most common ways people study and people tell you to study is to use Anki, which is a flashcard app. Personally, I wasn't a big fan, but I used it for a very long time. It just caused me a ton of stress. And there's nothing inherently wrong with flashcards and Anki. I think it's great, but there is an issue with having too many flashcards. It's very easy to go over the top, especially in something like medicine, where, as I said, the knowledge is endless. There is endless amounts of things you can learn. So by definition, there's endless amounts of flashcards you can make as well. So the trap is going over the top with flashcards to the point where you literally wake up having to go through your pile of flashcards is just the most soul destroying, the worst thing you can think of doing, but you just feel like you have to to survive at medical school. Remember the 80-20 rule, focus on the high yield stuff, the stuff that you actually need to make flashcards to remember, otherwise it won't stick. They're stuff that flashcards are useful for. Keep them as an ally and not your enemy. Make sure you use them in the right way so they don't become this thing you just sucks the energy out of you that you never want to see again. That is all for today's video, guys. I hope you found this valuable. I hope you've learned something. Thank you for watching. As always, God bless and let's win together.